Today's video is going to talk about 16.1, 16.2, which is the auto ionization of water, and we're going to talk about the pH scale, and we're going to talk about some important formulas that we can use within the pH scale to determine hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentrations, and things like that. So let's start off with the auto ionization of water. What we're talking about is in a, let's say, a mole of water, 18.02 grams of water, we're going to have a lot of water molecules, water liquid. We're going to have water liquid. Now, water has this unique property. And one of the unique properties it has is that it can act like both an acid or a base. And we're talking about an acid or a base with respect to Bronsted-Lowry. And so it can be a proton donor or it can be a proton acceptor. So let's say we have a couple water molecules and one donates a hydrogen ion to the other. That's going to be our Bronsted-Lowry acid. And the one that's getting accepting the, the uh, proton is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry base. When water does donate um, a um, hydrogen ion, it's going to be left as a hydroxide. Oops, and that's a 1 minus charge. Oops, excuse me, not a 1 plus charge. And it's also going to form a hydronium ion. OK? And so with that said, and this is an important thing, we could take this, and these are going to be aqueous, we could take this expression and we could write it as an equilibrium expression. We could write K is equal to our products. I really want to call hydroxides positive today, it looks like. I'm going to make that a negative. H3O plus. Okay, so we could say that it K is equal to OH multiplied by the hydronium concentration. I'm going to fix that real quick here. There we go. Okay, um, and we, we're going to leave out the water as a liquid form because pure liquids aren't written in a K expression. Now, um, We've talked previously about KC um, for concentration and KP for pressure, and this is going to be KW for water. Now, the value for KW water at 25 degrees Celsius is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. A very, very small value. Now, what that tells us is because it's a, so, such a small value, it's heavily, this, this equilibrium expression is heavily favored as reactants. So this really does not happen very, very often um, within a mole of water. Very few of these water molecules donate or receive hydrogen ions, but it does happen to a small extent. And this KW expression, this is called the KW expression, is very useful to help us um, solve some calculations that we might need to solve. So let me give you an example of how we would use this. Okay, so we have an example here. We have a solution um, uh, has a hydroxide ion concentration of uh, 0.001 molar. What is the concentration of the hydrogen ion? So this is a really, really simple problem. All we're going to do here is we are going to uh, use this KW expression, which is the hydrogen ion multiplied by the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to at 25 degrees Celsius. We're going to assume it's at 25 degrees Celsius, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And then we're just going to plug our value in for the hydroxide. So the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by the hydroxide concentration, which is 0 0.001 molar. And all I have to do is divide those two to get my answer, which comes out to be 1.1 times 10 to the negative 11th um, for the hydrogen ion concentration. And remember what we said before um, is we said that hydro hydrogen ion concentration and hydronium ion concentration are really used interchangeably. I prefer to use the hydrogen ion concentration, but you, like I said, you're going to see hydronium ions listed a lot in problems that we do. So that's a really helpful tool that allows us the KW expression this KW expression right here that allows us to, um, to uh, bounce things in and out of hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations. Okay. The next idea I want to talk about is this pH scale. And what we have here is, is a measure. The pH scale is going to be a measure of, of the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And so we have a pH scale that goes from zero, and we'll find out that it's uh, 
it's actually less than zero, and it can be greater than 14. Um, and if you are on the pH scale, measure of a hydrogen ion concentration, if you are down here below seven, you're going to be considered acidic. And if you're above seven, you're going to be considered alkaline or also known as basic. And if you're at seven, you're going to be neutral. Okay, and so let's talk about how this pH scale is calculated and what it's used for. Um, and so calculations of the pH scale, we're going to use another formula um, that is, it's provided for you on your equation sheet, which is the pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Um, negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So let's say we have something that, that tells us um, if we have a hydrogen ion concentration equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3, we could say what is the pH? And so it's a really easy, easy problem. We're just going to plug it in. So we're going to do a negative log of 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. When I run that through my calculator, I get 2.82. And let me just, and so that would, before I dive into something else, that would give us a pH of quite something right around in here, um, relatively acidic. pH of 2.82, relatively acidic. Um, just a just a brief mention about sig figs on um, logarithmic calculations. Um, this value here does have two sig figs, and so the way it works with logs is if you, when you have two sig figs, you're going to use two decimal or two places to the right of the decimal. And so you might be thinking, well, that's three sig figs, but we just look at the two places to the right of the decimal um, for our pH calculations. Um, another very useful um, formula that we're going to have, also given to you on your equation sheet, is the pOH calculation. A pOH is going to be the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Um, and so that's just a pretty simple thing. If we're given hydroxide ion concentrations, all we really have to do is we have to plug them in, negative log of them, follow those rules, and we're going we're to get our P, what's called pOH. Um, now, now there's a couple other formulas. Remember, if let's say let's say we're given the hydroxide ion concentration, but we want to know the pH, there's a couple things that we can do. A couple other formulas, and we're going to use these formulas in conjunction with each other. Um, so a couple of these formulas. Again, we can use our KW expression, which is once again the hydrogen ion multiplied by the hydroxide ion is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So we could plug this in here and get my hyd hydrogen ion if we wanted pH, and then we could negative log the hydrogen ion. That works. Um, we also know that we, we can calculate pH just by having pH equals negative log of the, hydrogen, of the hydrogen ion concentration. We know that we can calculate pOH equals negative log of our hydroxide ion calculation. Um, and there's one additional um, very important formula that kind of ties into the KW. So if we take KW and negative log it, we're going to get 14. And then if we get our um, pH by negative logging the hydrogen ion, and then we add it to the OH, excuse me, that's going to be a pOH, and we get a new formula, and that is pH plus pOH equals 14. So all four of these um, formulas, the formula of the KW expression, this formula, pH equals, pH plus pOH equals uh, 14, the pH equals negative log of the, pOH equals negative log of the, the hydroxide ion concentration, and the pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. All of these can be used in conjunction to determine, um, let's say, a, a, a pH problem, and we're going to be using these a lot. And so let me give you an example of a problem where we can bounce in and out of pH, pOH, things like that. Okay, so here's a problem where we're going to calculate, we are going to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration, and the pH given the pOH. So um, there's the only known we have is our pOH right there. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my formula pH plus pOH is equal to 14, and I'm going to plug in um, my pOH to calculate my pH. So I'm going to subtract... 14 from 2, or 2.75 from 14, and then I get 11.25. So, so first off, pH is equal to 11.25, um, and we know pOH 
is equal to 2.75. Okay, now what we have to do is we need to figure out how we're going to plug in, um, plug in and calculate um, the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. So um, I do know that it, my pH is equal to my negative log of my hydrogen ion concentration, right? So I can just plug pH in here, so then I get 11.25 is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, what I want to do is solve this for hydrogen ion concentration, which means I'm going to take the anti-log. On, on my calculator, the anti-log is actually, I just have to hit second log, which is 10 to the X button. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 10 raised to the power of negative um, 11.25. And that will give me um, my value for my hydrogen ion concentration. So I'm going to anti-log negative 11.25. And that's going to give me a hydrogen ion concentration equal to 5.25. 6, 2, 3, um, 4, and times 10 to the negative 12. Okay. And, and the next thing I'm going to do is I want to calculate my hydroxide. So this is going to be my hydrogen concentration. I'm going to calculate my hydroxide ion concentration. So hydroxide ion concentration multiplied by hydrogen ion concentration is equal to kW, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. So if I plug this value in here and solve it for hydroxide, move my hydrogen ion down, do 5.6234 times 10 to the negative 12th. And I'm going to get an answer of 1.778 times 10 to the negative third. And that is going to be my value for my hydrogen ion concentration. So once again, um, in this case, we used um, the anti-log or 10 to the x button um, to solve for, solve for hydrogen ion given pH. So we can kind of bounce in and out of these things depending on what we need to use to solve for it. And those are, those are our pH calculations for today. How to calculate pH, how to calculate pOH. If you add the two together, of course, you're going to get um, 14. And then we also have our KW expression up here, where we can use those two that are multiplied by each other to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So we can use all of these things together to calculate what we need in an AP chemistry question.